God does not say, oh, you have to pray perfectly before you can come to me or you have to ask perfectly because if you don't ask perfectly, then I'm not going to listen. No, he said, ask. It is right that you tell him your desires. It is right that you tell him what you want. Jesus portrayed this. He told the father, if it's possible, it's an ask. Let this cup pass by. I don't want to go through this. If it's possible, that was his ask. But then he sought, which is, Father, let your will be done, not mine. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video. I realized that prayer is not just about talking, but there's an action part to our prayer, which we have not been doing a better work at. And that is what I want to lead you to in today's video with the topic, asking to receive. Because sometimes we pray, and we cannot get the answer. And scripture says that we ask amiss. Now, in a while, I'm going to read that scripture to you. I got this, that faith without works is dead. And when we pray, we believe we are praying by faith and it's supposed to bring results. But then when our faith doesn't have works that is attached to it, it falls down to the ground. And in today's video, that is what I want to address in the way we pray the way Jesus taught the disciples to ask of God. James chapter 4 verse 2 to 3 says, You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Now, this is where I want to unpack the fact that when we pray to God and we cannot get results, scripture mentions clearly that we ask with wrong motives, just for our own selfish pleasures. And because of this, our prayers cannot get to God. Now, how do we pray better? How do we pray according to the will of God? How do we not ask amiss? Scriptures in Matthew 7, 7, Jesus explained that broadly for us to know. He said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Now, I saw this thing that is mind-blowing, which I actually heard somebody mention. And then when I studied, I got a new revelation on it. From those three lines, it spells out the word ask. Ask and it shall be given a seek and you shall find you see the A's and then knock a s k. You can see the ax in these three steps. And then I realized that our prayer is more than just talking to God. Our prayer is more than just talking and asking. The other part of it is the seeking aspect, which involves this a s k. How we can ask according to the will of God without wrong motive. The first one that said, ask and it shall be given, it is not in your control. God does not stop you from asking anything you want to ask. God does not say, oh, you have to pray perfectly before you can come to me, or you have to ask perfectly because if you don't ask perfectly, then I'm not going to listen. No, he said, ask. And what you ask shall be given. Then the next step to our prayer is now in our control. Now we have a responsibility. It says, seek and you shall find. Now the question is, what do I seek? It is to seek God's will. Because if you want to ask with the right motives, when you ask God for something, you have to inquire of him what is his will about this thing you ask. It is right that you tell him your desires. It is right that you tell him what you want. Jesus portrayed this at the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was about to be crucified, he told the Father, if it's possible, it's an ax. Let this cup pass by. I don't want to go through this. If it's possible, that was his ax. But then he sought, which is, Father, let your will be done, not mine. That was the seeking. Is the inquiring step of trying to know, is this the will of God? I am worshiping God. I am bowing at his feet because I want to know his will. Now you need to realize that for you to pray according to God's will, you must do this part that belongs to you. Seek the will of God. And how do you seek and walk in the will of God? It is to seek wisdom. Scriptures in James 1 5 says, If any man lacks wisdom, ask of the Lord and he shall give. So when you are seeking, it is a place of meditation. 
for you to meditate on the word of God because scripture says wisdom is a result of the fear of the Lord, which is the worship of the Lord, the surrender and reliance on God that you do as a human being. This is what brings you wisdom. When you spend time to be in the word of God and listen to hear his voice, this is what brings wisdom to you. Now you are in this seeking phase, getting to know God, let your will be done not mine. And how do you walk in that will? I mentioned it earlier. It is walking in wisdom. Without the wisdom of God, you will not be able to walk in the will of God. Because in the real sense, you might pray to God, putting out your acts. And then while you are seeking, you are not hearing anything. You are asking God, is this your will? And then you are not hearing an audible voice. You are not sensing anything. You are not sensing God speaking to you. Now that is where his wisdom applies. Because in his word, is a world of wisdom concerning his will. So when you seek his wisdom, you ask him of wisdom to make a better decision, he will give you. Now, this is what I got to realize that you can ask God whatever you ask of him and he will reply you. And most of the time, he will have to change your desires to align with his will, which is when you are on the seeking phase. Then he says, knock and it shall be opened. This is not your part. This is your part there is to knock, to press in like Christ pressed in. He knew it was God's will for him to go to the cross and he pressed in. He prayed for strength. He prayed to be encouraged. He called the people to pray with him. Oh, are you guys still sleeping? I called you here to come encourage me, to come pray with me. He went back, he prayed to the Father with his whole heart to receive courage for the door to be open, to be able to carry on with the assignment that was ahead of him. Now, how do we apply this in our lives? Shortly, it is you've asked of God, you ask for the job, you seek God's will. God, do I go ahead with this? You put in the application, definitely. It's still the seeking phase. You are meditating, you are thinking, you are allowing the wisdom of God to wash your mind, renew your mind, and change your perception and your perspective on what you've asked of. Does God want you to be rich? He says, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now, God would now change your motives when you are seeking him to align your motives with his will, with his intentions concerning you. Then while you're knocking, you are pressing into him. The knock, you are, you are tapping on the door and he said, God is the one that will open the door for you. God is the one that will make it come true for you. Now, I hope that this is blessing you. Ask and it shall be given. God's part. Your part is asking. Seek and you will find, which means you do the seeking to find. You do a research to discover. So now you knock and God opens up the door. This is the equation of faith in asking of God. It is not just about just talking. There is a step to seek God. There is a step to seek the wisdom of God. There is a step to get to know the heart of God concerning whatever need you have. And then you keep on pressing into him. Knock and the door will be opened. The last thing I will say to you in this video is do not lower your hope. Do not lower your expectation. Get your hopes up. Now, without hope, your faith will mean nothing. Your faith will be in vain. It is hope that fuels your faith. If you go to someone without expectation, it will actually show in your action and your moderation before that person. And you cannot come to God without expectation because you've been disappointed by men and you feel like if you carry expectations to meet God, God is going to disappoint you. He is not a God that disappoints. He is actually going to help you Align your expectation with his will. He said, I know the plans I have towards you. A plan to prosper you and to give you an expected end. Whose expectation? His expectation. Now it is for him to change your expectation and align with his expectation for you. And that is how you get to walk in purpose. It does not mean cancel your expectation and come empty headed. No. Come as you are with all your expectation. Just surrender and seek him and he's going to transform it. So this is to tell you, do not crash your hope. Get your hopes up. Hope in the Bible is a positive word that says it is a positive expectation of good from God. 
It is not a wishful thinking. I wish God will help me. I wish God will heal me. I wish God will do this for me. No, it is, I know, it is a positive expectation of good. Like David said in Psalm 27, I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Again, he said that I will not die, but I will live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, these are not wishful statements. These are hopeful statements. Yeah, they are positive because he knows that it is God alone that can do it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it is a blessing to you and you've Pick something off of this. It will be my pleasure to hear from you in the comments. And then I would love to see you in my next video. Thank you. I am OM Akwan. Bye-bye. Love you.